Hey, uh, it's uh, Badmouth Morris from Branch 226 at a Glencrest, Fort Worth. I'm new to the post office, but I ain't new to unions. I mean, we're all getting fucked in this contract. You're thinking, good God, man, where's this contract? And then when it came out and see how little we got, it, yeah, it, it lit a fuse. I drive a fucking 20 year old car. <laughs> this got 270,000 miles on it. I gotta park on a hill in order for it to start, just so I can get to work to not make enough to cover rent. Fuck this shit. There is an uprising happening across the country, across all 50 states, DC, and even the US territories that the national media isn't talking about. The National Association of Letter Carriers represents over 225,000 mail delivery workers in cities and suburbs. And for the first time in 50 plus years, its members are revolting. Stoking the anger is the failure of top secret contract negotiations between the union's president, Brian Renfro, and USPS Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, that left workers without a contract for more than 500 days. During this period of time, he continues to tell the carriers it's taken this long because it's gonna be historic. Just hang on, it's historic. That's been going on for seven, eight months, you know. It's coming out soon, and that was kind of the running joke. People who got kids going off to college, or now they're, or they're trying to buy a house, or they got a kid on the way. My bills just kept adding up because interest rates keep going up. The amount of compensation monetarily that I'm getting from the post office just isn't enough. So I was doing my best to wait this contract out because it was going to be great. You're thinking, man, if we can get up to like, you know, two and a half, three, four percent per year for three years, Pretty good little contract. I installed the shower here. Yeah, well, what happened was that one of my letter carriers, um, he, he was going through a bad situation, financial situation. He became homeless. And um, he came here, you know, he said, I don't have a place to stay, I can't shower, this and that. The membership approved it, so I built the shower. Just for thinking at least five minutes, five minutes that they could come in, shower, give them some time, a breather. The contract that Renfro finally took to members included a mere 1.3% raise for a job that starts out at $19 an hour for the first two years in a recently created and mandatory position called a city carrier assistant. Those workers will make 20 cents more an hour. The highest earning workers get a mere 43 cent bump. The failure to deliver has already had a devastating impact on individual carriers from Matthew in Cincinnati to those living and working in Brooklyn. So we got this tentative agreement and it wasn't what I needed. So bankruptcy. We're all looking for something that was a win because all of this looks like concessions. Why did this get worse? Why is this protection removed? Why is this, is this position still here? Why this low percentage? Why, 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 why? What are we getting for giving up these things? Nothing, 1.3%. To so many carriers, that pittance of a raise is the embodiment of a much larger set of problems that have degraded a job that once guaranteed a solid middle-class life. That is the deeper undercurrent fueling this backlash. Over the past 30 years, the wages, the treatment, and the quality of life have gone from this to this. Long unpaid hours and toxic work environments are crushing employees at the Bemidji Post Office, said according to a longtime carrier who quit just last week. Corey Walton, a letter carrier in Nashville, runs a podcast called From A to Arbitration, which has become a hub for angry, activist minded letter carriers. When I first started the Postal Service, and you told somebody that you worked for the Postal Service, you're rich. Your benefits, you know, your pay. Uh, your retirement, and everybody has passed us by. You, you get to be part of the neighborhood. Uh, like, you get to be part of the community. Someone's quinceanera is going on, and like, 
the family, the family hands me a plate of tacos and offers me a beer. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't drink the beer because I'm working, but I did take the tacos. It's a great job. It just doesn't pay what it should. And we deal with harassment and bullying from, a, from an organization that treats us as worse than disposable. We have DeJoy. He's the biggest union bust in the world. And that's what he's done his whole life. So now he's gonna come and he, and he comes out with a 10 year plan to change the post office. And little by little, he's eliminating jobs, creating all this other stuff that is just, it's just destroying us. Rank and file letter carriers all over the country are speaking out about what has become an increasingly untenable job with mounting risks to their physical safety due to the routes they take and the conditions in which they work. Attacks on letter carriers doubled between 2019 and 2023. It's one of the more dangerous jobs in the country. You know, obviously you have your police, your fire, you, you know, doctors and nurses and things. We are now being robbed and murdered on the street for people wanting our arrow keys to get into boxes. I've seen a woman get shot seven times. That was pretty, pretty jarring. I've seen a little kid get mauled by a dog on one of my routes before. Extreme heat has also been wreaking havoc on letter carriers who are tracked by management minute by minute through data on their package scanners. We have no air conditioning in these vehicles. It's 130 degrees in those vehicles. Management starts sending on these scanners, no brakes, no additional brakes. Keep it moving, beat the heat. That's exactly the message that 66-year-old Eugene Gates received in the summer of 2023. The widow of a U.S. Postal Service letter carrier who died on his route Tuesday this week believes the job he loved is what caused his death. Here's a guy who's never been disciplined. He's fixing to retire. And they bring him in there and they say, hey, you're getting this letter of warning for these stationary events. So what, in his mind, what is he thinking? I'm fixing to spend the rest of my life with my wife doing whatever we wanted to do. And, and instead of me taking breaks as needed in the heat, I'm going to skip those breaks because I can't afford to lose my retirement. It later emerged that USPS management never gave Gates heat management training. Instead, a manager falsified the record to say that they had. It wasn't an isolated incident either. This happened to thousands upon thousands of carriers. These indignities are only being compounded by threats and harassment from mid-level management. They don't get no respect. Management treats them horrible. The mandatory overtime needs to stop. A lot of people just want to work eight hours and go home. We had a young lady right here that just said she's been out of work because she's battling breast cancer and management puts her up for removal. <laughs> the abuse, enough is enough. They falsify our clock rings, our records all the time. They threaten to shoot and kill us. Uh, I had an arbitration about that. They assault us. I had an arbitration about that. And uh, we'll have carriers out on the street working. Management will just clock us off. You know, just end our tour. Don't tell us we're out there delivering, not even being paid. We have to catch them doing that. The union is constantly filing grievances and going to arbitration with management over violations of workers' rights. Their anger over this tentative agreement has led to a grassroots vote no movement by membership at all levels, from union branch presidents like John Cruz in Brooklyn to CCAs like Jonathan Morris in Fort Worth. People are pissed. And most of them, they, they've either blown out their voice from hollering on their own and not, and not having anyone hear them, or they're, or they're just waiting for someone else to say it first so they can be like, yeah, yeah. The frustration is largely with union president Renfro. Members believe that his personal issues compromised the contract negotiations. Early on during talks, Renfro all but disappeared for more than a month, offering no updates and setting a tone for what was to come. I'm Brian Renfro, president of the National Association of Letter Cares. 465 days ago, I made a decision to begin receiving treatment and start the road to recovery from the disease of alcoholism. Addiction is an intense disease, and I have great respect for someone who wants to take care of themselves, but not when you have 277,000 employees waiting for you to do your job. You don't just 
ghost everybody for 30, 40 days, not put anyone else in charge and then come back and throw yourself back into it again. From the information that we received, he admitted that he was the one that did all the negotiation by himself without the executive council. At the rap session that I attended, he informed us that the post office did an offer and he was the one that made the offers. The local leadership knows some struggles of carriers, just because we're local. But the upper echelon, even if they know, they don't care. If they did, they would have negotiated harder for a better contract because I was homeless for two weeks and there are people now, they're still sleeping in their cars. They're putting showers in union halls because carriers don't make enough money and it's, it's a crying shame. The carrier has kind of been abandoned in all this and I think that that's where you see the frustration is where do we go? Who do we turn to? So far, they've been turning to one another with rallies in cities all across the country to convince their fellow letter carriers to vote down the contract. U.S. postal workers from across Southwest Florida are rallying together today with a list of demands. Letter carriers rallied together to send a message to the United States Postal Service. We got a union that's incapable of doing a damn thing. And so um, those days are changing though. That'll, those days are coming to an end. We're gonna go on the offensive in two years. The workers say they plan to vote down this contract and take their chances in arbitration. Already, prominent union leaders are stepping up to run against Renfro in the 2026 National Association of Letter Carriers presidential election. They want to save their union and make being a letter carrier a viable career again because the bond they have with the people on their roots is as strong as ever. It's not the agency people love. It's the letter carrier delivering their mail, bringing them their social security checks, bringing them their letters from their grandson. That's who the public loves, not the management who sits in their chair abusing people all day. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you'd like to see more stories like this one, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more More Perfect Union in your feed. And if you have any ideas for stories that you would like for us to investigate, just drop them in the comments below.